Welcome to this video tutorial on how to make a realistic forest environment in V-Ray for Rhino. In this video I'm going to be working with this terrain I've made here, which is just a simple terrain made from a series of contour lines here and put into a surface form. Now in this terrain I've also set up a perspective camera from this small cube in the corner and we can see that on the side here. And if I were to open up my V-Ray Asset Editor and we'll just do a quick test render of this site, we can see what that is currently look like. We've got no texture on there, it's just a white surface. Now, to begin to make this forest environment, we're first going to start by making material for the forest floor, which is going to be applied to this surface. To do that, we're going to open up my V-Ray Asset Editor just by clicking on the V icon here or just in your V-Ray panel at the top and we're going to create a new material by clicking on create asset materials and a new generic material and I'm just going to name this 01 forest floor now don't worry about all these kind of materials I've got here this is for sort of a tree object that was in the scene which is why there's so many materials at the bottom and we're just going to be focusing on the 01 materials in this tutorial so we've got 01 forest floor and currently that's a kind of blank material there now for this forest floor material I've downloaded some textures for a ground surface and for this we just have this sort of dirt texture here which is some mud and some leaves and we've got a kind of color texture for that we've got a bump texture a displacement and also a gloss for any sort of reflections on that mud now I acquired this texture from textures.com and you'll find on here and I'll put a link in the description of this video lots of sort of different forest floor textures you can use for this particular purpose and there's quite a lot to choose from here and all of them have free downloads you can get for this purpose so with this texture what we're going to be doing is in our V-Ray asset editor we're going to start by adding the color into the diffuse channel just by clicking on this texture slot next to the color selecting bitmap there and then finding that particular texture and inserting that color texture into that slot sometimes it will be called a bleedo sometimes it will be called diffuse but it's the color map the one that looks like the object you want to create so we'll just drop that in there and then click on the back button to go back now we're also going to add in a reflection map and to do that we're going to do the same thing add in a bitmap on that texture slot and put in the gloss texture in there and I'm also going to copy that texture and put it in the glossiness just to give it a little bit of shine on that surface now as well as this we want the texture to be slightly bumpy and slightly uneven to give it that kind of dirt look so to do that under the bump settings we're just going to drop in another bitmap here and we're going to put in the bump map there now this would give it a very slight bumpy surface but if you really want to make uneven terrain we can also use the displacement map here to cause the terrain to be very uneven and give it that kind of rough surface. To add this in we'll have to go to the little add attribute panel up the top here and we can click on displacement there. If we turn that on and then under the displacement setting we're going to click on the little texture slot add a bitmap and we're going to add in our displacement bitmap and this works by anything that's white in the image is pushed up and anything that's black in the image is pulled down to give a sort of uneven surface on our terrain and we'll hit open that and add that in now for my displacement amount this will be set to whatever units you're using in your scene and currently I'm in meters so at the moment it's going to be pushing and pulling it up by one meter at a time which is going to be a bit too big for the purposes I want so we're going to set this down slightly to a displacement of a 0.1 which is a kind of 10 centimeter displacement there and once we've got that what we're going to do is we're just going to click on our surface right click on our forest floor material and click apply to selection now if we open up our render preview to have a look at this what you'll find is currently that's going to be scaled across the whole surface and currently we've just got one tile of that material across my whole surface now this is currently a kind of 100 meter by 100 meter square so I want to make this a lot smaller so we need to texture map it correctly to do that we just select the surface go to the properties menu 
go along to texture mapping which looks like a cone with a sort of checkerboard on it and we're going to select the box mapping and I usually just start by drawing out a sort of random box roughly at the size and then looking at this XYZ size on the side here and setting it to the exact scale you want and I want my texture to be 3 meters by 3 meters by 3 meters there and if we go back to our preview you can see there it's nicely tiled now from above that looks slightly repetitive but if we go back to our perspective view you can see there that that's working quite nicely and that's just our sort of basic forest floor material essentially applying a kind of carpet across this surface there so that's our basic material and now we want to start to add in some detail to this forest we're going to add in some low level shrubs and foliage now to do this I'm going to be using some assets found on the Megascans library. I'm going to be using this fern asset here as well as a few other kind of grass, tree stumps and other trees and I'm going to put links to where you can find these assets in the description of this video. But we're going to import this common fern asset here which we're going to use in our scene. Now to do this once you download this from a site like Megascans or other asset finding sites you'll end up with a series of kind of variations of the model and within those variations there might be different LODs they're called so we've got LOD 0, LOD 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and LOD stands for level of detail and essentially it's the kind of resolution of the model and you'll see the kind of size of that file gets lower the higher the LOD number. Now it depends on kind of how close or how far away to your camera you want the object but Usually, unless it's going to be really close, you don't want to go for the highest level of detail because it will up your render time by quite a lot. So I'm going to go for this midway, this LOD2 there. And what we're going to do is we're just going to import that in. Just by going File, Import, finding that object, and selecting that LOD2 there, and hitting OK. And when it asks you to scale, just hit Yes there as well. So once that in, it will probably import right into the center of your scene and we can just move it out to the side and zoom in on it. And there you can see we've got our model there. Now you might need to rotate it around so it sits flat to the floor. And there we've got our fern. Now, currently it hasn't got any texture on it. And if we put this to a rendered view to have a look at it, you'll see that it's just got this kind of toned color. It hasn't got any texture on at the moment. So we're gonna need to texture this to make it look like a fern. To do that, we're going to open up the asset editor again, make a new texture, a new generic material, and we're going to call this fern here. And under that, we're going to start to input some materials onto this. Now, these materials usually come packaged with the model you get, and if you've downloaded it from Megascans, You'll have a textures folder and you'll get this atlas folder here which is essentially the kind of cutout images of those leaves to apply to our model. Now what we'll do is we're just going to make the texture just as we would any other texture. So we're going to insert a bitmap for the diffuse. We're going to apply the Ablido, the color map for that. In order to get the cutout of the leaves we need to apply an opacity map here. So we're just going to apply a bitmap there and plug in that opacity there. And if you want a slight kind of bumpiness to the leaves where the sort of ridges on the leaf are, we can also apply a bump map in there. And you can apply all of these if you want or less if you don't want to apply all of them. Sometimes they're not all necessary to apply in depending on how close to the camera this object's going to be. I'm going to have quite a lot of these ferns so I don't need to apply all the maps in this case. Um, what I'm also going to do is under the refraction we can add in a translucency and if you add a volumetric translucency and under the scatter color if your objects come with it add in this translucency map we'll get a slight translucency to our leaves and that can be quite good when you've got light coming through the forest and it gives the leaves a little bit of a glow as if the light is passing through them. So once we've created that material we can then select our fern object right click and apply to selection there and that will apply that material to the fern and because this has already been texture mapped for us we don't need to apply any texture mapping the fern should be correctly mapped with that material on now you see there might be a slight white line or red line around the object 
this is just a mesh preview in Rhino and we don't have to worry about that too much. When we render it, it will look nice and realistic in that way. So that's our fern object and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and just do the same process with a few other forest objects I'm going to bring in. This will include a tree, some grass and some other objects and if you want to go into more detail on how you texture up and sort of bring in trees I've got another video that goes through that which I'll put in the link to this video as well. So now we've brought in our objects you can see we have a tree here we have some ferns, we have some kind of roots and fallen trees and other bits of grass which we're going to use to scatter across this surface. So now we're going to begin to populate our scene with these assets we've brought in. So to do this we're going to be using V-Ray scatter tools and this can be found in the asset editor. If we go create asset under geometries we can create a scatter here and if we go to our geometry tab you can find that scatter located and I'm going to call this first one shrubs which is going to be our kind of low level grass and ferns on our forest floor. Now what we need to do is we first need to select the items we want to scatter so for this I'm going to select my ferns and I'm also going to select my grass here then we're going to select our scatter tool and the shrubs and hit add guests and what this would do is it will add the selected items to my scatter and you can see here that they're all sort of stacked below that add guests panel there. Now what we can do is we can select our surface we want to apply these to and we can right click on our shrubs scatter and click apply to selection and what you'll see there is we'll now get a little preview of all of these shrubs scattered on that surface and if we go back to our camera view and load up our render of this to have a look at it we can start to see how these look on that surface and there you can see those shrubs loading up there now they're quite scattered at the moment and they're not very dense so what we can do is we can start to play around with the density of this scatter and this can be controlled in this density panel here so if I up the density to a density of 3 for instance that will increase the density in the number of these objects on this surface and we can get a slightly kind of bigger amount of these ferns and this grass and what this is doing is it's essentially randomly placing these objects across this terrain it's also adding a rotation which is defined by this random value of 0 to 360 so it will pivot those on the z-axis at a random rotation to make them all look slightly different and we can also add a random scale so we can up it to a minimum scale of 0.9 and a maximum scale of 3 for instance and that will create a variation in scale of these objects across this scene so here you can see we're starting to get a really sort of dense forest of all of these kind of bits of grass and these bits of ferns as well so I'm going to lower down that scale slightly because it's looking a little bit big there and we're going to keep it at a sort of 0.9 to 2 and I think we'll sort of leave that there for now and we're now going to add in the trees by the same method. Now something that V-Ray currently doesn't support is we can't add multiple scatters to the same surface but there is a workaround for this and what we can do is we can essentially select our piece of geometry here, hit the copy objects, I'm just going to lock that vertically and we're just going to copy it slightly below the previous surface there. So what you'll end up with is two surfaces one below the other. What this means is we can then apply a new scatter to the surface just below our old one so we can scatter the trees on that surface and we won't see that kind of double up in geometry. So to do that we're just going to create a brand new scatter. We're going to call this trees this time and then we're going to select our tree object here and we're going to hit add guests there to add that in and then under my trees we're going to select my surface and we're going to go apply to selection there. Now what you might find with bigger objects like trees is the density might be far greater and you can see here if I start this render it's going to be sort of so dense with trees we're not going to be able to see anything. And here you can see it's kind of just a black wall of tree trunks because we can't see anything because the trees are blocking that. So we're going to have to severely reduce the density here and I'm going to drop this down to a density of around sort of 0.05 
and see how that looks. And it, depending on the size of your surface, the size of your object, you might need to play around with that density until you get a good amount. But I think for this, a 0.05 is working quite well. And here we've kind of got our scattering of trees. Now, if it happens that you get a tree right in front of your camera or it's blocking the view, what we can do is we can change this seed here. And what this is, is it's just the random orientation of the trees. If we up that to another number, it will just rescatter them in a different configuration. So you can change the seed value and it will just change the location of those trees. And often I'll do that if I get a really big tree in the foreground like this, you might not want that. So you can just keep adjusting that seed value until you get a nice scattering that works well with your scene. And I think maybe this one's looking quite good. We've got a sort of tree in the foreground and the rest of them are scattered nicely. And I think for this we'll also change the scale value to have some a bit bigger and a little bit smaller as well. So by kind of separating out the foliage and the trees you can independently vary their scale and their placement there so you can kind of have different scatter objects for different objects in your scene. So we've got one for the shrubs and one for the trees there. Now as a final thing we're just going to do this one more time and add in those last elements, those kind of tree trunks and roots and we're just going to do the same thing, copy our plane and just put it just below the last one there. So we've got sort of three planes there. Then we're going to make a brand new scatter geometry call this stumps and we're just going to add these two tree stumps we've got here onto there like so and then we're just going to apply that to this last plane here and you probably want to adjust the density of this as well and I'm just going to put this down to a 0 0.1 so those are all our elements in place and now we've got those we can do a quick test render to see how that's looking and you can add as many sort of scatters as you want you might have to kind of copy the surface as I have done if you want multiple scatters with different kind of controls and tweaks within them but you can kind of keep adding to these objects now bear in mind the more objects you have the longer it may take to render but in terms of sort of complexity of your scene you might want to sort of make it look more complex by adding in more things and that can really help with that but here you can see now we've got our free scatters we can control them completely independently and we're getting a nice kind of looking forest floor there now as a final touch to this and to really kind of sell the effect of this sort of dense overgrown forest i'm going to apply what's called an environmental fog to really give it that sense of depth in the image this can be found just under the settings panel in v-ray and under volumetric environments and if we drop this down and turn on the little slider here we can turn on this environmental fog now by default it's set to a white color and you might need to adjust the distance which is set in meters um, of this to give it a kind of thicker or a lighter appeal um, what this distance value applies to is it means that at a distance of 50 meters the fog is completely kind of thick and you can't see through it anymore so that's the thickest point of the fog so for this I'm going to set it to 100 because it's looking a little bit thick there and what I sometimes do with this fog is I'll change the color to sort of match the sky color slightly. Um, the reason for this is that the white color can sometimes make it look a little bit smoky in the scene um, and if you want it to sort of match the color of the sky if we do it a really light blue it can just take that kind of smokiness out of there and you might want to adjust the height as well to make it a little bit higher in the scene too. So once we've added the fog I'm going to let that sort of render out so we can see what this image is currently looking like there. Now I've let it render out for a bit you can really start to see how much that fog adds to the image giving it that sense of depth and also giving us these kind of god ray effects of where the sun cuts through the trees and has nice sort of god ray light that comes in and cuts into the forest floor creating this nice dappled light environment in the center here. Now if we tweak this light we can also sort of add to this effect and if the light is coming right at the camera you get really sort of strong god rays and we can always do that by going back to our rhino light settings and just tweaking the orientation of that light to sort of fire it straight at the camera there as well. And here you can see that sort of god ray effect happening 
on the lighting in our scene too. So that was just a quick tutorial taking you through the steps of creating a realistic looking forest environment in V-Ray for Rhino. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to watch any other videos on creating different environments in V-Ray or different render effects in Rhino, please check out the videos on the channel. Thank you for watching.